now with jet ventilation, there's a couple of really important things to do for safety. Now, jet ventilation isn't without risk. For example, you've got this needle into the neck and often it's a blind insertion. You're not really sure exactly where that is. So you've got to be really safe that this is the thing that's going to save the patient with oxygenation. But there's a real risk of barotrauma because you're going to be insufflating very large volumes of air and oxygen into the lungs potentially. So now once you've confirmed in, your, in the correct position, I need to jet ventilate. Never letting go of the cannula or getting someone else to hand you this equipment. I get someone to connect my rapid oxygen device to the oxygen cylinder and turn the oxygen on. And you can turn it on to 15 liters, absolutely fine. I then connect this, it's a Lua lock connector, and I insufflate for four seconds. One, two, three, four, and then I let go. Now, four seconds at 15 liters per minute with this device is probably about a liter of oxygen, and that's probably all you need to make sure that you get a rise in the saturations and oxygenation to keep your patients safe. Now, a little bit about jet ventilation. So jet ventilation is a really effective way of getting oxygen rapidly into the lungs, but it also has a lot of dangers. If you're in the wrong site, it can cause subcutaneous emphysema. And even if you're in the right site, say you're in the trachea, too much airflow into the lungs and the trachea can cause barotrauma. So just imagine that you've got an obstructed airway. So at the top, there's complete obstruction and the only aperture is an in-aperture there through this needle rapidly insufflating that much, you know, that many liters of oxygen can cause barotrauma pretty easily. So what they say is insufflate for four seconds, one, two, three, four. Now that's about a liter of oxygen. I wait for over 20 seconds because that's what it takes for the sats to rise. And then I let it fall. And what they say is 5% of the maximum achieved. Then I can give another two seconds, one, to. Now, what this does is it makes sure that I am giving oxygen, but I'm not over-ventilating and giving the patient the risk of barotrauma, which is a real risk. So, a couple of safety things we do. Now, this device is actually a particularly good device because it's got quite a large orifice here. Now, this is important because you get a lot of tactile feel. If I'm just insufflating, I'll feel not much back pressure, but as soon as there's an obstruction, you can hear that difference. That's unblocked and that's blocked, and you'll feel an incredible amount of back pressure there. So you'll get a lot of tactile feel from this device simply because the tubing is quite large and this thumb position here is also quite large. So once I've got the patient to a level of safe oxygenation, I can then convert this to a Melka kit. That's what